And then all this data, and this a test management product as well, so you can manage you know, testing. All this data is stored on a, um, a SQL Server database. Again, we are Microsoft, so it stores all the data on top of our database. Um, and we also provide a warehouse above that that allows you to visit that data and analyze that data and see what you are doing every day, you know. Um, which area of my code has the most code churn, which area has the most work items associated with it, which time of day that builds happen means that most bugs get raised in that build, or whatever you want to analyse, because all the data is stored in one place, you can just analyse it. The goal is to give transparency to your development process. Now, as well as being able to talk, obviously, Team Explorer is for Eclipse-based IDEs to talk to, into, into um, Team Foundation Server. We also, Visual Studio can obviously talk into Team Foundation Server, you know, that's our IDE. And then we have Office integration, so things like Excel uh, and pro uh, Project, they can also all talk into this data repository. So it's key for us that your development can all live in Team Foundation Server, otherwise you can't use Team Foundation Server. And then, you know, they can't get you using all the features they build for Visual Studio with all, you know, with some stuff in, they can't get them to use those features either. And so we really want people to use Team Validation Server and we need everybody using it for it to be valuable, really. Um, if you're in a company and you have some .NET people and some Java people or some Android developers and some, you know, uh, Windows Phone developers, it's no good those people developing into separate places because you can't then tell what's happening in your development organization. If you have a requirement which is some new functionality you want to deliver, I'm I'm selling flight say and I want to sell car hire when I sell a flight, I want to try and sell a car hire as well. If you're building that feature you need to implement that across every every part of your stack. Your Business requirements don't stop at technology boundaries, so neither should your development process. Okay, and that's basically these are the marketing slides that say that. So you know, blah blah blah. <laughs> okay. So the whole goal is to help you standardise in one place. So enough slides. Let's have a play. This is supposed to be a demo camp after all. So um, here I am again in uh, um, a snow leopard. So I'll come up here and, oh, so let me just actually make sure, again, forgive me, I just uh, restarted my virtual machine while we, were, uh, while we were on the break, so I just want to make sure everything's up and running, give me a second. Okay, so, um, in fact, let me just hit refresh here to make sure we're okay, we're good. Right, so here I am, let me close a couple of windows first of all. So here I am in Eclipse. Um, with a, a classic example application. Uh, if I, the important thing to mention here, I'll close one more window so you don't see that either. Okay. You're in an Eclipse project bound to Team Foundation Server. It still looks like Eclipse. When, uh, you know, we, we are Microsoft, uh, have a habit of. Um, you know, sometimes not respecting the environment we're in. Here we are in Eclipse on the Mac. It's still Eclipse on the Mac. Uh, um, we don't put any, we adhere to all the Eclipse conventions. We don't put any main menu options in. We don't put any obnoxious buttons in there. It's just, you know, if, if you're using it and don't, if you have it installed and don't want to use our features, we're not there as far as we're concerned. We don't exist. Probably a bit too much, actually, because if you want to come in here, if you go to Window Show View, you have to go to Other before you can see us. And there we live on the Team Foundation server, so I bring it from Explorer. Of course, do you know, uh, is it Control, sh control N? Is it? No, Control Shift N? I can't remember. Is it short? Three. Pardon? Control 3. Control 3, there we go. I'm doing Command. Oh no, I've done the wrong one now. Yeah, 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 there we go. Yes. So I can come on here and I can say Team Explorer. Sorry, I was doing Control rather than Command. Uh, there we go. Let's see, so obviously you appear there. So. 
my favourite one is obviously it's Command Shift T or you know that's my favourite shortcut. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So there's Team Explorer, and we'll bring up um, the pending changes view as well. So I'm just going to bring that up. Okay. So that was Control Three. Yeah. Okay. So um, now one of the services we provide is Source Control. So if we come in here, I right click. Where do you expect source control to live? TV. TV. Way. There we go. You all know how to use Team Foundation Server already. Brilliant. So there we go. Team. And there's all the functionality you expect to see with a version control server. TFS works. Um, it has a model that's more similar to, say, something like Perforce or Clearcase than, than say, Subversion. So when you do a you do a get to download source locally and then you check out to check a file out in source control and check in to put that you know, to check that file in onto the server. Now again we're a modern source control system so if I come in here and I start typing uh, so let's say that's now again I won't bore you with my Dutch but I do have some French. So bonjour there we are. Yeah. So you notice it checked out that file um, in the background. I didn't. It, I didn't have to wait for that file to check out. It assumes success and goes does it in a background job in Eclipse. Uh, similarly, if I, I used to be a consultant, so I'll Control C that and paste it over here. There we go. There we are. So it just checks out the file for me, and it builds up a list um, of changes. Here, so you can see the changes that you're currently working on. A change set, a bit like a subversion, you know, where it's a, <coughs> a set of changes you're working on. So we have that there's some version control I'm working on. Now, the whole point is that your source control and your work items are very tightly integrated in one place. Now, we've always had this, um, and we support this in Eclipse versions all the way back down to 3.0 or 3.2 with the latest release, because 3.0 was Java 1.4 only. So you can have in, um, you can associate uh, your check-in with a work item. So if I come in here and I look up work I'm currently working on, we can see that the hello world message should be in English, we want to perform a demo, we've got a bunch of tasks. This is storing the work I'm working on. And this again is coming from this same TFS database. So I can associate that pending change with a work item. So I'll say I'll fix the case of the bug. Uh, I'll make it hello world of the case. Or something. Well, I tell you what, let's create a new bug. Why not? Let's say new work item bug. Um, this is what a bug looks like by default. Complicated, you might say. There's a lot of data here. Um, let's just let's just. This is fully customizable on your server. You control how this form looks and what fields are in there, what the, the, the life cycle is, you know, if it's new, approved, uh, resolved, you control all of that. It's just XML you customize. So um, I'll say uh, localize into French, say that. You know, I can have a description here. Uh, this is a text. I can make that bold, obviously. There we go. And uh, it was because of this control here that I actually had to do the IE9 fix in SW2 because um, we embed IE9 on Windows, but on the Mac it's obviously Safari, but on Windows it's IE9, and it was the in it was the com interrupt into IE9 that, that stopped working, and so Eclipse SW2 stopped working. Anyway, just that's just what I you know I like the other bugs I did was um, PD. Anyone used anyone created an RCP application? Yeah. You, again, you use my code. So uh, the, in PDE build, you know when you when you brand an application to give it an icon, I I did that. So it um, it, uh, it um, basically looks at the there's an exe file that ships the, the bootstrapper, and it looks through that file for icon resources, and then in Java code, this is what's cool. It takes the .exe file and writes a .exe file, sticking in the icon resources into it. So yeah, and the fact that that works on 64-bit Windows was uh, I had to go because the file format changed. I had to fix it to work on 64-bit. Yeah. 
Anyway, there you go. So you've used my code, even though you don't see it better. <laughs> In fact, if you use a clip, you use my code. So there we go. I'm impressed. Okay, so I'll, I'll create that. But there's the bug. And if I jump here, I'm going to go into uh, Visual Studio on Windows. If I just quickly um, go to bug 80, just for a second. And there's that bug I just did over there. Uh, so, shift oh, enter. There we go. There's that bug I did on Eclipse. There it is on the Mac. There it is on Windows. <laughs> Notice the tab, we're in SWT, so the tabs are tabby on the Mac, you know, it's the proper tabs. Uh, we just, you know, we get that for free, obviously. We just, we're, we're, a, we're a proper SWT Eclipse plugin. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's the bug. We've checked that in and associated it with the bug. Uh, so I'm just going to hit refresh here to pull down the bugs. Bug 80, there we go. And let's do a check in. Um, yeah. Now we have some features here. One, uh, we've got, see there, you've got shelve and unshelve. Basically, um, if I'm working on something, and I don't want to check it in yet, I want it to be committed, I can shelve it, and that takes a copy of your changes, stores them on the server, and keeps them safe, so they get backed up with the database. I can then, at a later point, come in and unshelve the code back to my computer, or a colleague could unshelve that code and pull it on his machine. So if you wanted um, your colleague to check that your code works or you know did a, do a code review, you can shell your changes, get your colleague to unshell them and check them out in his workspace. It's a bit like sending around patch files but it uses the server and it can work across servers. And 